Samritha Kanekamedla, and I'm here with Dr. Lee. And I'm Dr. Andy Lee. I'm the chairman of ophthalmology here at the Plant and Eye Institute and the neuro-ophthalmologist here at Houston Methodist Hospital. We're going to ask Dr. Lee a few questions so we can get to know him for his YouTube channel. So why did you create this YouTube channel? Actually, it was the learners that decided to start the YouTube channel. I'm kind of a more of an old school guy. I like giving lectures. I like traveling around the country and delivering those lectures in person. However, it's clear to me that social media is a new and exciting platform for delivering this information and that the learners of today want small sound bites. They don't want to have an entire one hour lecture. They want to have a five minute thing they can get in and get out. And YouTube seems to me one of the best means of delivering this kind of video content in a conversational way, just like what we're doing right now. Who is your target audience for this YouTube channel? So I'm interested in reaching anybody and anyone who's interested in neuro ophthalmology, from the most basic of learner, whether they're a medical student, all the way up to a practicing physician. So to me, the target audience is anybody who's interested in neuro ophthalmology. What fuels your passion for teaching? I truly believe that education is the foundation for our future, and our young people need to learn about neuro ophthalmology. Neuro ophthalmology, to me, is not just a hobby, it's a passion. I believe in it every day. I live it. I love it. I eat, breathe, and sleep neuro. And if I can share even a little bit of that passion with people who are interested in learning something more, to me that's very personally and professionally rewarding. What advice do you have for someone interested in becoming an ophthalmologist? So becoming an ophthalmologist and becoming a neuro-ophthalmologist are challenging uh, choices because it's so competitive. However, anyone who's interested and has passion for the field, I would encourage them to investigate ophthalmology as a choice. We get to actually see disease. We get to see central nervous system in action, in vivo. No one else can say that. It's a real superpower to be able to look in people's eyes and detect death and disease and make a difference in the lives of people. So to me, ophthalmology is the best specialty. We get to see the disease we're trying to defeat. The students at Baylor College of Medicine have a couple of questions for you. What do you do for fun? So, neuro-op is fun for me. However, I like traveling. I enjoy historical travel the best. If I can learn something new about history and put into global perspective history in a real-world setting that I get to walk uh, the ruins or see where the general stood or see for myself what the historical figures heard and saw during the during their day, that really has more impact on me. So wherever I go, no matter what, I try and find some time to visit what is historically significant to me. As you were going through your training, did you have a mentor? So I think everyone in medicine has someone that they would consider a mentor. For me, I'm lucky in that I have had multiple mentors throughout my entire career and, and really throughout my entire life. When I chose neuro-ophthalmology, I was fortunate enough to go to the Johns Hopkins Hospital and work with Neil Miller. Neil Miller is well known as a neuro-ophthalmologist, but he's more than that to me. He's a colleague, he's my peer, he's been my mentor, role model, and most importantly, he's been my friend. So for me, combining friendship with my passion for neuro-ophthalmology has been a very rewarding aspect of being in the family of neuro-ophthalmology. And in that same year, I was privileged to have a fellow fellow from Mayo Clinic named Paul Brazes. So Paul Brazes to me was both a colleague and he trained with me at the same time at, at Wilmer, but we have become friends and he has mentored me in ways both personally and professionally that have been so helpful over the past 30 years. And finally, Dr. Tony Arnold at UCLA was the very first person I met at the North American Neuro-Ophthalmology Society. And over the years, he also has been a very powerful inspiration to me and a personal hero of my own. So I'm lucky that I have three mentors. And our last question is, how do you see the field of ophthalmology changing in the next five years, if at all? So ophthalmology is a high-tech field. So we are we are so blessed in ophthalmology that we have had the development of optical coherence tomography, OCT, and new innovations in OCT and in imaging have allowed us to see at the micron level. So we're not just dependent on our own eyes for seeing what the problem is, we can use machine eyes to see what the problem is. And machine learning and artificial intelligence will allow us to sift through way more data and more, way more imaging data than we could ever process ourselves with just our own human minds. 
And what that's going to allow us to do is spend less time on looking and more time on de determining decisions and thinking about what the problem is and solving those problems. And if we can get the machines to take over some of the heavy lifting on the, the looking part, I think we'll be able to find a lot more stuff. Thank you so much for sitting down with us, Dr. Lee, and thank you to all of Dr. Lee's viewers. If you would like to get the latest updates on the videos that he posts weekly, please be sure to subscribe. And thanks a lot for having me.